of this book of John. We will find in verse number 26, he makes the statement, For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. He has life. He has the power to give life. Matter of fact, he tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe this? That he is life. He's got life given power. Matter of fact, in chapter 14, you know the verse. In chapter 14, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Thank God. Hallelujah. He is the life. Ah. Oh, we were born dead in trespassing and sin. But one day the life came away and come to us. And when we got the life, then we could come to the Father. Because He breathed in us life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Let me say this. He's got life giving power. But not only does He have life giving power, He's got life shining power. Do you not see that? In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. John 8, verse number 12. He says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8, 12, 46 says, I am come a light into the world. Let me say a few things about this life. Darkness cannot stop life. Darkness cannot stop life. The darkness comprehended not. Could not grasp it. Could not take it under control. I tell you this, they do not turn the dark on in a room. They turn the lights out. Why? Because darkness can't stop the light. The light stops the darkness. Oh, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shines in our hearts. In the face of Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 tells us, the light slid on. Now let me say there are some that are blind and cannot see the light. You say, why are they blind? The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. But if you believe, hallelujah, the light will come on and you'll say, I see. Because you cannot see if you're blind. Do you remember in chapter 9 of this book, there was a man, a blind man. And he said, whether you be a sinner or not, I know not. For no, I know not. One thing I can say, whereas I was blind, now I see what happened. The light shined into his heart. And he could see. The light shined into his life. And he could see. There is the power of creation. But not only do I find the power of creation in this one, in this word, or in this word, in this son, the power of the sun. But we find the power of salvation. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The power of salvation. None other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's salvation in no other. The one way. One way. As Moses lifted up a serpent and wouldn't receive so much the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son and whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not a Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Saved. He's got the power of salvation. There's only one way to have me saved. And that is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and thou shalt be saved. Then we come to the Christmas story. Not only do we find the pre-existence of the Son, not only do we find the power of the Son, we find the presentation of the Son. Verse number 14, he makes that statement. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The presentation of the Son is in a person. A person. Without controversy, God was manifest in the flesh. The Word became man. The Word became flesh. He took upon Him the likeness of sinful flesh. Though He was nothing like it in sin, but it would look just like sinful flesh. He looked like a man. There was no beauty that you should desire in Him. There wasn't something special about Him. There wasn't something that said, oh, this man's a king. This man's got glory. Oh, it was covered up by flesh. He was not, there wasn't something there mystical, something there magical. Oh, no, not for me to follow after him. That's why he came in his own and his own received him not. They wanted somebody to come down with an angel from the realms of glory. They wanted somebody to come down with all of the glory shining. And he became a man. Looked just like every other man. He looked just like every Jew around there. Born and placed in a manger and wrapped in squatters. He had no glory when he left. He came out of the ivory palaces into a world of woe. He left his glory. That's why he said, restore me the glory I had with thee before the world was. Why? Because he gave up his glory so that he might show forth God's grace. Because if all we'd ever see is God's glory, no man can see God. And live. Okay. Oh, but he put on a robe of flesh. Thank God one day this robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to see the everlasting prize. But the reason I can do that is because Jesus Christ, though he were rich, became poor that I might be made rich. That's right. The presentation of the Son. Let me say, he was presented in his person mood. But he was presented by preaching. That's what John was doing. John was preaching. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, the same came for witness, the bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He tells us again, he, he said he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. He tells us in verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was him whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred for him, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He tells us, that's what he preached to the public. Let me say this, he didn't just preach to the public, though. He preached that same thing to the priest. Verse number 23 tells us, He said, I am the voice of one crying in the waters. Make straight the way of the Lord, said the prophet, as said the prophet Isaiah. They were for sin, were of the Pharisees. And he acted, and again we see uh, that they asked him, and he said, uh, he said, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom you know not. Why didn't they know him? Because there was no beauty that they should desire him. There was nothing different about him. He looked just like any other man. He knew him whom he knew not, know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes that's kind not worthy to loose. There was preaching to the public. There was preaching to the priest. But not only do I find preaching, but there was preaching in His presence. Oh, when Jesus showed up. 
we find in verse number 29. He says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Oh, this is he of whom I say, after me cometh the man which is preferred for me where he was before me. And I knew him not. But he should make made manifest to Israel, wherefore I come baptized with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending upon him from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw the bare record that this is the Son of God. Oh, thank God. He was presented by preaching. Now let me say, John, who was his cousin, didn't know until God revealed it unto him that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. He thought, he's Jesus. He's a good guy. We can play Legos together. Hallelujah. He said they didn't have Legos. How do you know what they had? What are you there? Well, Legos are made of plastic. Okay, you just building blocks. And I don't know. They did things together. They played baseball before baseball was invented. They kicked the can before there was a can. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to tell you. We don't know how they did, but they, had, they played together sometimes. They'd go on vacation and see each other. <clears throat> when they'd hang out, I mean, they'd go, they might go to feast days together. And they'd get together, and guess what? Here's Elizabeth and Zacharias, and here's uh, Jesus with Mary and Joseph, and, and John and Jesus get to hang out together. You say, I don't believe Jesus did all that stuff. Y'all forgot Luke. He's the son of man. He was a child. He grew up just like any other man. The presentation of the word. Then I find the personality of the word. John message declared some of the truths that describe Jesus and Christ. He described the, the brightness of Christ. Not even do I find that, but he describes the blessings of Christ. We dealt with the brightness of Christ as he was the light, unstoppable, unexplainable. But we do not, but then we find the blessings of, of, of the Son and grace for grace. He giveth more grace. He was exuded and poured out grace and he just gave out, that's his personality. His personality was bright. He's a brightness of God's glory. But not only was he bright, but he, can I say he blessed grace, grace, grace. Let me say this. One of the hardest things I find in this world is people don't want to show grace. They want to blister instead of bless. That's a hard thing. I'm not going to mention a whole lot, but I'll just say this. If you don't agree with me on something, I'll sit there and I'll start putting you down. And you say, what? You do that? Not me first. I'm talking about that's how the world operates. They cannot show grace. If you don't do it like I do it, I'm going to be against you. And we're going to fight. Next thing you know, if you don't agree with me on this position, the next thing you know, we're at odds. So at odds. But Jesus showed grace. You think he agreed with that woman taken in adultery? Do you think he agreed with that man who was uh, ha who had uh, an infirmity because of the fact of his sin? And who he said if worse things will happen unto you? Do you think he agreed with their lifestyle? Do you think he agreed with these things? No, he didn't agree with them, but he showed grace. He didn't agree with the publicans, 
but he showed grace. Why? Because he's a God of grace. That's his personality. The blessings of the world. But not only do I find that, I find there's the baptism of the Son. In verse 33, we'll get quick like on that. He said, and I knew him not, but he did sent me baptized with water, and saved said unto me, upon whom thou see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. You know why he got baptized with the Holy Ghost? The Bible tells us the Spirit descended on him and remain God. He had the Holy Ghost. That's right. He was the Holy Ghost. He's called the Spirit of Christ. So we find the last thing, and I will not spend much time here because most of us understand it. We will look at the possibilities by the Son. Well, number one, we find that there is forgiveness. That's of right. Sin. Did we not see that? Verse number 21 or 29. He said that the next day John seeth Jesus coming into him. And say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He bare our sins in his own body on a tree that we be in dead sin should live under righteousness. He was made to be sin for us, though he did no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He, there is forgiveness. There is a forgiveness that God has because of the fact that there's power of salvation in the Son. And the possibility is there's forgiveness. Not only do I, let me just, I, I've got to say this. Where did this happen at when John made this statement? It's when John was baptized. A baptism under repentance. We can find that in the book of Matthew. We can find where that baptism was in the book of Matthew. We can find that book in the, in the book of Mark. You can find that in Luke, in Luke 3 and 3. John never mentioned repentance because he figured you must have read Matthew, Mark, and Luke before you got there and figured out what John's baptism was. It was a baptism of repentance, which will let you know something. That there had to be repentance because that's who he's preaching to. That John seen Jesus says, Behold the Lamb of God who take away, who's taken away the sin of the world. And he tells them to believe on Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, and that this was coming after me, and I knew him not, but he should make manifest. Therefore I've come baptized with water, saying, I saw the Spirit descending upon heaven like a dove, and I knew him not. But it was baptized with the Holy Ghost. But not if you don't have the baptism of repentance. If there's no repentance, there's no reception of promise. As many as received him, to them gave the power of the Son of God. I am not going to preach this, but that will help you in Matt or in John chapter 3. Amen. You'll say, what's that talking about? If you ever figure it out, it'll make you so happy because you'll figure it out that John had a baptism of repentance. The requirement to, re to this salvation, this forgiveness, is repentance and reception. Verse 33 says, I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's called the operation of God. See, what is he talking about? It's Christ putting the Holy Ghost inside of you. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. And the, the Holy Ghost does this work. He puts Christ, the Spirit of Christ, inside of you. Now, you may not have the Spirit of Christ. He is none of His. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But not only does that, the whole operation, He puts us in Christ. Buried or baptized into Jesus Christ or baptized into His death. Hmm. I'm talking about Galatians 3, 27 tells us that we are placed in Christ, baptized into Christ. We are baptized, placed in Christ. Now 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, they want to argue about some folks about whether that's a local church thing or not a local church thing. This is, a, this is about the body of Christ is what he's talking about. But I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to go with Galatians 3, 27. It said you're baptized into Jesus Christ. 
And in, in Romans chapter 6, it says if you're baptized into Jesus Christ, you're baptized in His death. We are placed, immersed, submerged, put into Christ. And then Christ is put into us. That's the baptism. He'll baptize with the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Holy Ghost does a great work. So we will find forgiveness. But not only do I find forgiveness, I find fullness. Because the Holy Ghost has moved inside of us. Guess what happens? Oh, you say, grace for grace. He giveth more grace. The more humble yourself, He gives grace to the humble. I mean, as you humble yourself, God just pours out more grace. You say, I need grace to help with my time of need. Oh, He'll give you more grace. All it takes is you just come to Him. There's fullness of grace. Fullness of grace. And of His fullness have all we receive in grace for grace. What happens? He also gives us someone to follow. Someone to follow. Verse 37. We will find that. Verse 37. And his two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Can I say this? But also give you someone to find. Now, that's in the scripture also, chapter 1, verse 41. And he said, he first found his own brother Simon. And say to him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted as the Christ. These are possibilities by the Son. Forgiveness. Fullness. Someone to follow. And then I'll show you someone to find. Now, if we're not following and we're not finding, what makes you think you've got forgiveness or fullness? If we're not doing the work in us where He works in us most willing to do of His good pleasure, working those things that are well pleasing in His sight, if He's not doing anything now, what makes you think He did something in the first place? He had done a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, He's the Son. He is the Son named Jesus. The Word was made flesh. And there's so much possibilities that we have in Him, by Him, through Him. There is forgiveness. There is fullness. But it's so that we can follow and find. Jesus does not fill us with the Spirit, with grace, just so that we can shout. But He does it so that we can search. Search for souls and search the Scripture. He gives it to us so we can supplicate. Pray without ceasing. He gives us grace. I ask you this. What did you get from Jesus? He gave his Christmas present to us by giving himself to us. What did you get? Did you get forgiveness? Did you get fullness? Say, I, I, I think I got that. And tell me, what you're, are you following him? Are you finding others? If not, what makes you think you got forgiveness? What makes you think you've got the fullness? What makes you think that? Well, I can tell you the day and the time. Huh. You can't figure that out on your own? I said a little prayer down here. I did this. I did that. Is that not your works? Are you not depending on what you did? I'm talking about what he did. What do you got? What's it doing? I ask that question because it's a serious thing. What'd you get for Christmas? What are you doing with what you got? I just 
tell you this. When I was a kid, I'd get toys for Christmas. You know what I did with them? I played them. God gave you his son for Christmas. That's a Christmas present. What are you doing? That was a presentation. What are you doing? Are you letting him work in you both the way to do his good thing? What are you doing? 